What's up, y'all? Welcome to another episode of Dev Talks with your host, Travian. We talk about everything engineering and technology-wise. So sorry for the voice, uh, a little sick, but or recovering from being sick. And in this video, going over the hard reality of future tech jobs. And <clears throat> I, I am conflicted on this, kind of. I, I want to know what they're going to say exactly before I speak in any way, of shape, or form of this. So without further ado, let's dive into this don't forget to like comment and subscribe i really appreciate it and let's go the people who can just code like i mentioned earlier who've like been coding all their lives they don't have soft skills the majority of them are in danger in the future there are four sort of leverage multipliers you can think of there's code there's media there's capital and there's labor the long-term future i'm talking like 10 20 plus years of long-term employment is pretty dire. Learn to build, learn to sell. If you can do both, you become unstoppable. Codesmith will bring all sorts of experience and that's the way the future is going. You need to be somewhat of a generalist in the future. It's not gonna be math skills that will be the reason you win, it'll be. I'll get to the software engineering now very quickly, but a few years ago, I was in investment banking after I left college. And my story is no private school or anything like that. You can check my LinkedIn or my personal website for more of my personal childhood story. But fast forward, I went to investment banking after university. It's a place where your brain turns to cabbage is what I always say, because you're basically working hundred hours a week to do Excel PowerPoints and it's all status signaling. It's, it's basically Hollywood. It's all perception. It's not a place where, you know, if you have a curious mind, it nourishes your mind. And it's not a place long term where you can live a happy and peaceful life because end of the day, that for me is important. So that sounds like a very bad place. And this is why I say it's a bad place, because one, for starters, your mind's not being curated. For me, it has to. I have to be learning something. I have to be developing something. I have to be doing something. My mind has to be on go especially when i'm at work because one of the reasons i'm a software engineer is kind of the task i have to deal with on a daily basis and getting around it and using what other other skills that i have that i know as an actual person and leader and doing it and there's always a mix up and a wrench thrown in there somewhere and without it i would be so bored of how simple it is and two of not wanting to be there not having a happy thing you want to go somewhere where you want to go in every day or you're okay with going in every day that you feel decently inside of as well too. And a better environment. Environment means everything in the place that you want to get employed at. So I definitely agree on that. So I left. I did a whole bunch of things in tech, which were all non-technical. Uh, so things like business development or product management in startups. I had a swing at some of my own startups, not venture backed, but sort of bootstrapped. They call it indie hacking now, the cool kids, but if a bunch of projects failed. Two of them did okay, but it was nothing beyond like a salary or something. And then I said, okay, I, I have a few months to like take a deep breath and explore for the first time. Cause since childhood, I was always in like survival mode. I started reading and listening to anything and everything I could. One of the ideas which comes from Naval Ravikant is the idea of leverage. There are four sort of leverage multipliers you can think of. There's code, there's media, there's capital, and there's labor. If you code something, it's not like, let's say you turn up to a nine to five or you own a corner store or you own a restaurant. You have to physically be there. You know, your input equals output in terms of it's, it's linear. And code is nonlinear in the sense that if code does well, you code it once and then it can earn for you online. You have a few customers. It could be, you know, I don't know, you're selling an $8 SaaS subscription. doesn't have to be something crazy, but you're then earning money while you're sleeping. So that's leverage. I realized code, not only for the leverage points, but also for the importance of, you need to know code because if you don't tell the software what to do, eventually the software will tell you what to do. I have never once thought about using code as, um, I haven't thought of it in that exact way. I, I've thought about like coding to develop certain things, to use it to make money and those applications to make money, but I never saw it as, hey, this code, I'm using it as leverage to make money, blah, 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 blah. 
it's just never exactly in that term um have i thought about it in that exact angle we think differently i guess but that's that's fine what keeps you motivated as an entrepreneur and coder i'm kind of also confused on like it says he's a senior tesla engineer and i'm not getting to the point i want to get to the points that are about engineering i don't know what they're talking about entrepreneurial reasons because if you're an engineer are you an entrepreneur at this point i probably missed it earlier in the video but let's go to something that's actually way more interesting as far as will it be how we're going to migrate with ai and his ideas for it what i was getting at earlier when i said like the long-term future of corporates is kind of dire i meant that one needs to know how to like build or code but those who can only code and not have any soft skills i think that may be pretty dire in the long-term future i mean there's a lot of talk about that already i think a lot of people that i've had the pleasure to code with at codesmith are the type of people who come from let's say other industries for example teachers accountants photographers all walks of life and that's what i love about codesmith and they are phenomenal coders because of the high bar of entry they come to codesmith well they've worked they've been public speaking they have empathy they have all these characteristics where it's not just i've sat at a keyboard but in the corporate world these people who've been coding since they were kids they can just code they they can not really put together a good sentence this is exactly true. Uh, hold on, I'm going to let him finish before I dive into it. Whether it's in writing, it's in speaking, and with more and more automation in the long term. Peter Thiel himself, the founder of PayPal and like a Silicon Valley OG, Peter Thiel has said, you know, in the, in the future, it's not going to be math skills that will be the reason you win. It'll be verbal skills. It'll be soft skills. So you got to marry the two. So I 100% agree with that last portion. It's not all about how you do technically because i've been preaching when this whole ai mess came into the picture that hey when you use ai you need to find ways to make use ai to make you a better engineer as far as getting stuff done quicker solving issues with it it's there as a tool using it as a, a proper tool because we're going to get to a place in time where coding specific use cases can just be generated at certain times i mean look at us as engineers we develop scripts that automatically generate specific kind of code layouts and templates and things so you don't think ai can learn be able to learn from it it's going to be able to have one day or another it's going to get there the main portion it though is like how you interact with other people and how you can direct other people engage them because just having a person who could just code, they're just basically like a tool, just like that AI is. You just tell them what to do and they do it. They might take longer to do it as well, too, at a specific point in time. But being able to discuss and work your way around certain things um, and do it properly in the right way and be able to critically think on that aspect and actually solve. The point of being an engineer is not the specific group of engineers being able to solve the problem. All of our curriculum classes, we were supposed to learn how to critically think and solve problems as the main point. That is what we get paid for. That is what we're supposed to navigate as. And that is how we're supposed to be growing in that standard. We don't want, want to be close to a machine. You get close to a machine, you look replaceable. It's easy to replace you. Why do we need you? Because you're not doing anything different than ChatGPT, OpenAI, or any of the other sources are doing at all at all yeah a hundred percent yeah in tesla itself where we have young people who are let's say interns or just come out of university when i mentor these people if they've been coding since a young age i tell them look the best thing you could do in your free time go to something like Toastmasters, which is public speaking. It's free. In your workplace, you can nominate yourself. You can do things, be proactive, like tell your manager, can I run these meetings? Can I run the stand-ups we do every day? Or So you're being more proactive. And really, after a few reps, you just get better. You get comfortable. It's like running into the fire. Or the growth is on the other side of the discomfort, which, God, sounds so trite, but it's, it's, it's the truth. So it was like, okay, 
I'm going to go to in, in the evenings, I'm going to go to Toastmasters. In the weekends, I'm going to, I don't know, read these books. In some of my free time, I used it to kind of upskill. And then that goes a long way, but also as a means of necessity, another positive black swan was in my teens and early twenties while studying, I always worked in sales jobs, like very aggressive, cold calling sales jobs. We have something similar in that aspect. I actually, if you guys want me to interview him, remember this year, we're going to be starting interviews on this channel. Big surprise. If you want me to interview him, let me know down in the comment section below, because we actually have some slight similar background. My first job was in sales, actually. A lot of people don't know that, but I will be talking about it more on the personal channel, Travian and Holly, and going from there. But yeah, you learn a lot of good skills from being able to communicate properly and work your way around and you get into certain rooms being able to communicate properly as well too what kind of rooms they are hopefully they're all good ones but i'm telling you i i've gotten into some rooms that most people are afraid to or even able to in my career so far and i've only been doing it at this including internship years three and a half years so it, by year five definitely gonna have some type of crazy growth and you have to think about it more of a growth than just being an engineer. Like some people just want to have that engineer role. They don't want to go into manager, Jerry and everything else. But if you have these skills, you'll be able to go into any branch that you want to. You don't want to limit yourself down only one career path, not knowing these other skills. So you're able to branch off a lot more and be able to fit into any place where they need you also. In London, where almost every week, heart, like, a lot of people just get the cuts because you got to hit a certain number of sales on the phone. I think that helps a lot. That's why I always tell young people, the technical skills, if you're eager, they'll come to you, Could definitely work on those, but marry it with the soft skills. A lot of people have this expectation from my point of view anyway, where they think, okay, I just turn up to whatever boot camp, any boot camp, and then I have a job at the end of it, like happy days. But Firstly, that's not how it works. Uh, if, if that's your mind frame, a bootcamp is not for you or any type of ed education. Uh, because if you think you're going to do that, then you're definitely not going to be able to learn by yourself, which is an even complete different path. My bootcamp experience was I actually sucked at coding, but you keep going. And it's the notion of compounding, which I have to throw another Charlie Munger quote in there, but he says, Rule number one of compounding never interrupted. So like a lot of times I had heavy imposter syndrome, still do. And when I was coding, I was like, damn, I really don't know much, but you actually know a lot more than you do at, at any given point in time. And you just- That is very, very true. Every time you get on a new thing, you feel the imposter syndrome, it kind of. But if you've been through it, the more you go through it, the easier it is to overcome it. The best thing to do is just walk and run right through it. The best thing to do. Because then you, you show yourself that you're able to. And you show yourself your real skill limits. I've shown myself where I can grow into with time and patience and like questioning everything possible that I could so I can take in more and be the sponge that I need to be. Just keep going. Well, the future... We've already seen something like the tool Devin, which is the, the first sort of autonomous software engineer. I think there's estimates. It's like 12% as complete as of a human being software engineer so far, but it can do basic things like pass some technical interviews and take some upwork jobs and complete them. What, I, what I'm getting at is the people who can just code, like I mentioned earlier, who've like been coding all their lives, they don't have soft skills. The majority of them are in danger in the future because my view is that every company will have, every big corporate will have a few, just a few, maybe five or 10 or two, who knows, depending on the size, just a few of these quote unquote hundred X engineers who have again been coding since they were kids, but they're another level. They're not like your regular coding since kid, they get paid 10 X of everyone else. So you have those people who will be kept, maybe five of them will be kept in the corner. It's like, these are the people we don't speak with, leave them alone for crisis management or preventing hackers or whatever, whatever. That's like a small minority, like a few percentage points. And then you have the majority who can code, but they'll become obsolete in my view. And then the software engineer will become technically, it will become like a technical product manager, which is you need to know how to code. You need to know some UX, UI design. 
You need to know how to do even product management. A lot of product management is the non-technical aspect as well, understanding the psychology of users. So like UX, UI, design, speaking in a lot of management meetings, all of these things comes from pretty much soft skills and the aptitude to learn and just like a more generalist mindset rather than I'm just going to learn to code and I'm going to do this for the rest of my life because even a lot of the FANG people I've worked with, they've been in FANG for like 10 years, like Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Netflix, Google. And then they come to somewhere like Tesla and then after 10 years of coding, they just want to be like a staff product manager, but they're a technical staff product manager. So it's given them the optionality to now lean into something which is marrying the soft skills with the technical skills and their future is so bright more than anyone else in tech, I think, because these people can code, which you need to know because the future is AI is going to do some of the code for you or a lot of it, but it still will need a human being to make the overall architectural decisions or the trade-off decisions, or as you say, these elements which humans can only understand or need to do. Because as an example, if software is going to write a blog, already a lot of writers I know who have sold like a million plus books, like some of the best-selling authors, and even they're critical of, everyone's critical of, you can just firstly tell when an AI has written it. So that's where we're going to end that off. But I completely agree with, I didn't, I wasn't expecting this video to exactly go this way, but for a majority, I agree with him. Um, that's exactly where I'm trying to trend myself into and grow myself into, yeah, well, beyond that, just there. I, I have very strong ambitions with everything. And obviously with this channel, it helps me learn and keep up on everything. But yes, if you're a software engineer, whatever he said, he's correct. I want to interview this man so bad, but Without further ado, I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps out so much. If you want to see more videos like this, click the video that pops up right around now. And if you want to recommend any videos for me to react to, go down in the description, look at the email, send me an email. I'll be going through them every day almost to try to siphon through which ones that we could be would be good to react to and get into it. Without that, peace.